Yeah, I see as a distraction from the issues that are confronting the country now. The issues related to the constitutional reform process, which has been a process which many people feel has not been inclusive, has not been participatory, and has left a lot of people feeling frustrated and excluded. Plus, the cost of living issues facing Jamaicans, the crime rate, and the lack of hope in our people. So it's not surprising to me that our political competitors are seeking to generate distractions around these issues. Uh, and I think that's what this is. So yes, I'm a born Jamaican. I was born at University Hospital, 1965. I grew up in Jamaica. I went to school there, Mona Prep, Campion College. I studied abroad. And I came back right after, went to Norman Manley Law School and did two years there. Got a Commonwealth Scholarship, did a Master's degree in Law in the UK, came back right after, and I've never worked anywhere other than Jamaica. So my entire working life and my childhood um, were here. So yeah, I'm a born Jamaican. I do have British citizenship as well, by descent. My father came to Jamaica in 1953 from the UK, and he spent the rest of his career and died there. He's buried on Slife Road. So, you know, he was a person who gave a lot to this country. Started the Mona Rehab Center. He was in charge of the medical response to the polio epidemic in the 1950s. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Kendall train crash. He was sent there to deal with the aftermath of that terrible incident. And he was established a National Road Safety Council, Hope Valley Experimental School, all of these things. My mother was a career public servant. Uh, she was one of the first three ladies, I believe, to join the civil service in Jamaica in an administrative position. And later on, after she got married and had children, she moved to the rehab center and spent the rest of her career there. So I'm very committed to Jamaica fully. You know, my entire life is about Jamaica. And so this whole thing is a bit peculiar. The truth is the constitution of the country from 1962 to now allows, in fact, requires commonwealth citizenship to be eligible to be in our parliament. The UK and Jamaica are both part of the Commonwealth. So my presence in the parliament is in accordance with the constitution, is lawful, and that's why I've never really thought of this as a big issue. I think that I think yeah. that's where the confusion rests, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Bowman, because we have heard people say, oh, but, 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 but the PNP has called for other people to denounce their citizenship. Um, but, but, but you're saying, the UK is a commonwealth, but not the US. Correct. So the Commonwealth are nations who were largely former colonies of the, U of the UK, but the US is not included in that. They have never been a member of the Commonwealth. Um, so there was an, an instance in 2007 when a number of candidates were, in fact, not eligible to be in Parliament because they had citizenship from countries that were not in the Commonwealth. And those matters were taken to court, and the court they were, they were booted from Parliament. They had to come back in. They had to by elections, elections right? that were held, okay. correct? And some of them, were, I think they renounced their citizenship right. in order to be eligible. Right. And that happened. But there are a number of people in Parliament who are Commonwealth citizens. I'm not the only one. Um, so, you know, I don't see why this is a big issue, but it's obviously being used as a way of trying to attack me personally. So you don't think there's any validation at all to the issue? Because you, you mentioned the issue of the CCJ and constitutional reform, which is another area where there's deadlock that I want to ask you about. But mm -hmm. one of your statements is that um, the CCJ being um, Jamaica's final appellate court, it, it can be a case where we have one foot, this is your direct quote, one foot in, one foot out of King Charles's yard. Right. Is there a parallel between that statement and what folks are saying now about your dual citizenship? And well, also, is it therefore fair for you to categorize it as a mere distraction? One foot in and one foot out refers to the idea of leaving the monarchy, but not leaving it. In other words, Jamaica becoming a republic, but still having as one of our institutions of government in the highest level, uh, the Privy Council, which is the King's Court. When the King, when you, when you take a case to the Privy Council, and the order is made by the court, or it's made in the King's name, and I'm saying, and the PNP has been saying for decades, let's fully decolonize, stand up on our own two feet as a proud nation, and move forward together. So in terms of the dual citizenship rule, 
The Constitution allows, as I've said, Commonwealth citizens to be in the Parliament, and I've always regarded it as important to comply with the Constitution and the laws of Jamaica. So we're going through a process of reform now. If this matter is debated, um, and, and the Jamaican people feel strongly that the, the, the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition, as two individuals, should not have dual citizenship, I would take the necessary steps to um, relinquish the, um, that status, you know. But as it stands well, now... But if folks mm -hmm. ask you why wait until that time, because yeah. the, the, the notion that the, the PM raised yesterday is a matter of um, the, the ultimate executive leader not being perceived, well, not the Constitution say, but you know, perception um, uh, being oftentimes the reality and the lens through which people view things, the, the, the perception of split loyalties, um, the, the per perception of having uh, two masters. The PM said, you know, we have, we have a parachute if anything goes wrong. Um, you know, it needs to be clear that you have no other loyalty. Well, first of all, the PM is not really in a position to say that because the PM has sworn allegiance to the king. In 2021, he joined the king's privy council voluntarily and, and would have had to swear an oath or affirm an oath of loyalty to the king. That was a couple of years before he suddenly came on the train about decolonization and becoming a republic. So he's a flip-flopper on this issue. In my case, my life is one of service to the people of Jamaica. Um, certainly in the latter part of my life. Before that, I was in the private sector. But since 2007, when I became a senator, and more importantly, since 2012, when I became part of the government as Minister of Justice, and now as leader of the opposition, my life is